Hey, this is Mike. I'm here at Grand Strand Nissan in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I am checking out a really awesome large SUV that Nissan makes. It is a 2015 Nissan Armada, and this one is the uh, Platinum Reserve trim level, and uh, so it has quite a bit of features. And um, but anyways, let's check it out. This one is has the 5.6 liter V8 with a five-speed automatic transmission and it is a seven passenger vehicle but uh, this one is black and I know right now it is pollen season so trying to keep things clean is impossible this one's black with pollen speckled around on it so just keep that in mind and uh, this one has the optional uh, the dark colored chrome and the um, on the wheels here so you could get chrome wheels if you wanted to but this one has the chrome clad the dark chrome clad wheels on it and they are at 20 inch in size but overall um, is a pretty good size SUV and very uh, well laid out in the inside as far as uh, comfort room and features so let's go around here to the front and um, I think it has halogen headlights I hadn't been able to confirm that yet if you know let me know but that's what it looks like and then you've got the fog lights here it also has some tow hooks here in the front some some tow hooks there um, I guess in case you need to secure something and it also has the uh, the parking sensors here in the front it has them in the front and the back then you got the big Nissan badge there in the center. Let's see if I can get you a better view over here. This one has the painted uh, roof rack with the side rails, uh, the crossbars. I mean, it does have the steps that kind of match the uh, the rails there. Has a set of Michelins. There's the window sticker. Got heated uh, side mirrors here, and um, it does have a a, uh, a marker here for your turn signal, uh, little, like an LED angle um, arrow there, and uh, it has these lights under here. And what's interesting, on the window sticker they call them puddle lights. <laughs> so I guess when you open up the door, it illuminates, or right, as you're approaching the door, and you're unlocking the car, it, it, they illuminate to make sure you're not stepping in puddles. I guess that's that's the only thing I can think of. Uh, this one does have the intelligent key right here. It looks like all the other Nissan keys in the 2000, just about all of them. And um, so basically, you can use this button, this this key. Uh, you can push the buttons, or you can actually just keep it in your pocket and you know use the vehicle without actually taking it out of your pocket. So um, so right now it's unlocked. But if I wanted to lock it, I can just push this button. As long as the key's on me, as a close by, within a couple feet, I can push this button to lock or unlock so if it's locked and you push it it's, it unlocks so um, you know so you can use the key to unlock it you can also use the key to open up the trunk uh, I mean the, the hatch there but um, let's go ahead and check out here on the passenger side front this one has the almond and chocolate colored interior which uh, looks pretty neat and also kind of makes me hungry just thinking about almonds and chocolate but here on the passenger side, we've got plenty of, you know, kind of side door storage here with uh, bottle, different size bottle holders there, and uh, your window control and your door lock control. Then you've got some, you know, brown stitching, the chocolate color stitching here. And as far as soft to the touch, pretty much everything is except for this here. And the seats are awesome, and they are they, they do have the zero gravity seats with the uh, like kind of like a side bolster here, and they're soft and comfortable. There there is a power seat on both the driver and the passenger side. It's not a very tall vehicle to me, but um, it does have the steps and the the handle here to get in. Um, so I guess uh, I mean it, it has some height, but uh, it's not you know overly you know like you had to climb in or anything it's a pretty good height there you can see it has the platinum reserve badge on the back of the seat 
and it does have the armrest with these it has an armrest there but it also has these two I guess so uh, you can have more one closer because this is a wide vehicle and it has a lot of room here glove compartments kind of mediocre small uh, not really huge like some of the other uh, Nissans it does have this side like paper paper pocket or something put envelopes in there and it's got this uh, wood grain around um, no doubt synthetic wood grain I'm sure but uh, it looks pretty nice especially when the light hits it all right so let's check out the back here this is the second row and you see it has a similar theme on the door it does have a what looks like a little speaker right there and then a big speaker down there not sure what this is maybe you can let me know um, but I don't know what that is and here's the seat you have the, the platinum reserve badge in the seat here in the back as well and this is a manual uh, adjustment seat now you can um, you can basically using this it's kind of hard to do with one hand let's see if I can do it yeah you can tilt these seats see how far the back they go so if you're cruising in the back and you're on a long trip or something you can you know recline your seat and get comfortable and uh, these are the zero gravity seats back here as well and uh, speaking of getting comfortable it does have the uh, the DVD systems in the back of the the headrest here in the front to where you can you know kind of get comfortable and watch a movie or whatever and then you've got the armrest here and then you've got the big center console which I'll get into that in a second now this whole thing um, it's a little bit of a procedure to get to the third row uh, this lifts up here and then once you get to the seat to this point here you've got that fold folded forward and then you grab a hold of this and you fold it down to hold it and it disengages the bottom at once it reaches a certain point and once you get it there um, you can see it's uh, got like a little bit of a climb there you know so it's a different tier level and then you can climb in so I guess the back I mean it's not a massive amount of room to get in the back but it's uh, it works and then there's your back seats there it is a 60 40 split back there and they will fold down which I'll show you in a minute but look at all the cup holders and pockets and stuff and you can um, I mean you can power the seats here so like say um, using this button here you can make the seats go up and down but there is also a seat in the I mean a button in the back to do that too which I'll show you you've got some climate control buttons there and up here is like just kind of a storage bin it folds down and you got some there's the controls there for the climate control and then you got some lights and then another storage bin up here all right so let me go ahead and put this back down like so lift this up and then this goes down so that's the kind of procedure there Let's take a little bit of a broader look back here see what it looks like all right looking at the back you've got a chrome exhaust tip there and the parking sensors this one has the uh, the, the towing package here with the seven seven prong plug there now this one does have the self-leveling system to where if you hook up a trailer that's kind of got a little bit of weight to it plus you have a jam full of cargo and passengers and even stuff on the top it'll keep this vehicle level it'll keep it from tilting too far on the back so if it starts leaning like this it'll pump itself back up and be level and that's a big safety issue when you're traveling on the highway at high speeds you don't want the vehicle to be uh, squatted down there's the backup camera right there so I'm going to go ahead and just use the key um, to, do, to open up the back. You can basically just push it and hold it here. And it 
will open up. So looking in the back, it doesn't look like there's a massive amounts of storage space, cargo space, and um, with you know utilizing all the passenger seats. But like I said, you can you know you can fold down the seats, and then you've got a heck of a lot more uh, space. So let's say there's one passenger that you don't have. Um, so it's, let's say you have six people instead of seven, you can put that down and you have more uh, cargo area space and you do have a little bit of space under here when I say a little it's just a tiny bit um, but it's mostly just to keep stuff out of sight I guess you can say or to put small stuff it's gonna stay in the vehicle you got a power supply back here and uh, closing it down you can instead of using the key like I said you don't ever have to use the key really you can just push this button And this is, uh, you know, one of the SUVs where you can actually open up the, the glass here by pulling this little handle here, and this opens up. In case you need to just kind of quickly access something here in the back without lifting up. Um, one good thing about this is you can, like, literally put a bunch of stuff in here to where if you were to make it, kind of use it like a box, I guess you can say. And... Um, so if you were to actually open a tailgate with all your junk in here, it might fall out. So, um, so this is kind of one of those situations where you can actually, uh, you know, just kind of load it up with stuff and just use the glass to access your stuff. And it's more, you know, more for small stuff. You get know, a whole bunch of little stuff in there, and you know, you don't want it to fall out. So that's a pretty neat feature. Uh, a lot of some U.S. Uh, SUVs are kind of doing what, doing away with the the glass opening so like um, I don't know some other vehicles but anyways um, continuing on there's your fuel cap there and this one is a E85 uh, flex fuel vehicle so you could use uh, up to 85% ethanol and the engine will adapt to that so let's look on this side really don't know what this is. Wish I knew. Is that the door lock? Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's look back here. And then of course you got another uh, DVD screen there. And the reason, kind of the main reason why I'm on this side is because this one has a uh, this folds up this way so I want you to be able to see this storage area here and it uh, looks like a place to put the remote control this one does have the wireless headphones and remote control um, they're still sealed in the box for the uh, for the owners so when they buy it it'll all be in there new but um but anyways big old cup holders back here and uh, you got you can pull them out and clean them and put them back in uh, that kind of stuff Heated seats back here, and you got some more cup holders. Power supply here. So I guess the third row people can't have the heated seats, but that's those seats I guess are less used than the other seats for most people. Now this um, this is a side mirror that actually has an auto dim feature. So if somebody's behind you with their bright lights on, this will auto dim just like the rear view mirror. It's heated. It's got the puddle mirror. I mean the puddle light, which I think is pretty pretty funny name. And here's the inside of the driver's door. And you can see uh, the doors are really good size, so it's really easy to get in and out of this vehicle. And um, lots of headroom, which I'll show you in a second. But there's the the pockets, just like on the other side, big storage bins. Um, the power windows, here in the front, these are automatic power windows, so you just one touch up and down. You can um, roll those windows by just pushing it down and it automatically goes all the way down. And that's what the A is telling you. But here in the back, you have to actually hold it until the window is right where you want it and let go. Same thing with going up. Side mirrors, um, you can adjust them. Here's the little controls for that. And this is a power fold. 
side uh, power fold feature to where you can fold them in if you wanted to do that. Let's say you have a, a tight garage or something. Or if you just want to park it and then fold them in as well as park so people don't walk by and they, they get more room while they're walking by. Presets for the seats, you got one and two. And for what I understand, you can actually um, basically program for the key. So when you program the vehicle with one key uh, in the vehicle, it'll and then you get in the with the end with the other vehicle and program it, it'll recognize the key and adjust the seat and and the mirrors and everything accordingly, which is pretty cool. Lift gate button is here, so you can open up the, the, the gate back there. This is a button, may not do it with the vehicle off, but this is your those quarter panel glass right here. That big glass will kind of kind of vent out uh, by pushing that button so that way you can if you roll the front windows down and then those out the air can just kind of flow right through the vehicle all the way through the, to the back passengers uh, this is just a blank button and this is your automatic you can adjustable pedals here so your brake and, and gas pedals can go in and out and this you can turn your parking sensors off if you want to do that um, you know, like say if you're getting close to something, it could be backing up to a trailer or something, it's just kind of beeping at you and you're, you're getting annoyed, you can turn them off if you want to. Alright, there's the controls for the seat. So let's go ahead and hop in. Just the seat. So, right now, I mean, it's kind of like a dentist chair. You can, you can really fine tune the seat here. But, uh, so, let me just be quiet for a second. Fairly quiet on the inside. You can still hear the birds chirping and stuff. But, um, with everything turned off. But let's go ahead and start up that V8 engine. Now, this one's a little bit different. It doesn't have the push button. It has kind of like a, a just a, a knob that you turn push it in and then you can turn it just like a key as long as the intelligent key is in the vehicle with you it's not anybody just turns that it's not gonna um, it's not gonna start up okay so here's your chocolate covered leather wrap steering wheel with the stitching on the inside the almond color stitching on the inside And I like the way Nissan actually, you know, has matching steering wheels with the interior and doesn't just stick with black and nothing else. Cruise controls on this side, uh, basically you turn it on and you can set it and then you can go up and down and get your, uh, your speed right. On this side you've got your volume for your radio here. You've got a back button um, and that pretty much corresponds with... Um, I think it's mostly for this here, but it could be, it could be for that. And I'm, I'm noticing that um, I didn't see a back button here, so uh, there it is. There's the back button. Usually, it's right up in here somewhere. This one's a little bit different um, as far as the controls here than the other Nissans. Uh, it doesn't have the around view camera, which I was kind of surprised. And I don't know if that's because it's, it's an option and it's not on here. No, this is the Platinum, so. I'm not sure, um, you know, I'm not sure if it's even available on the Armada. I'll have to find out. If you know, let me know, please. And then uh, your source is basically what radio station, like say AM, FM, XM, XM1, uh, that kind of thing. Or, you know, say a um, auxiliary input, something like that. That's your source. And then you can enter it and you can scroll through. Go back, yeah. So the, yeah, all these controls are for there. And here is your gauges. And you've got your voltage and gas, temperature, um, your miles per hour, all the good stuff there. This right here, I think, is your transmission temperature. Uh, this is your engine temperature, I think. Because I see that there's two temperatures, and um, 
and since I guess this vehicle is designed for towing and stuff like that, you can kind of keep an eye on the uh, the transmission temperature. It does have a transmission cooler, an engine cooler, stuff like that. So it is a heavy duty um, heavy duty system. But um, I'm just kind of curious. Let me know if you know what that is. Uh, I think it's a transmission temperature. And then you got your headlights on that side. And then on this side, you've got your uh, windshield wipers and stuff. There is one in the back as well. And this one has the miles per gallon there. Let's see here. We can go through. It's got two trips, and then there's the miles. This vehicle has uh, 17 miles on it, so not very many miles. I guess it's seen one test drive all right so over here uh, we've got the the map which we're looking at now and um, you can put in a destination like say a uh, specific address and stuff Let's see if I can get a little bit closer there but pushing destination you get to put in your your home address if you wanted to and it'll take you home no matter where you're at or you can just put in a specific address uh, the AM FM radio there um, XM is there and uh, does have the CD player down here so you can choose that and there's an auxiliary option as well and there's nothing connect there right now so let's go back to the map let's hit status uh, this is just kind of telling you what your I guess like is showing your climate control and also uh, what your radio is doing so it's, it's telling you that it's set up for auxiliary right now and um, so I'm going to put it back to XM and I'm going to push status here. Yeah. So that gives me the radio and the uh, climate control. I'm going to push route and so this is, I guess you can change your different routes. So if you're going to a specific place and uh, you want to change, like a, say you want to avoid traffic or do you want to avoid uh, highways or you want to avoid tolls stuff like that you can change uh, and edit the route uh, and there's different settings for that that's where this you can do that here and let's hit the info this is where you can see your fuel economy um, you can update your map you see weather info traffic information let's go here get my traffic information no traffic information has been received so I guess in this area it's not really uh, it's not going to really show you that. You can adjust your nighttime settings here, so the screen at nighttime won't be so bright, so it won't be so distracting. And then display, you can change you can do your display functions there, adjustments, uh, phone. You can pair your phone. Um, once you pair your phone, you can uh, send and receive calls using this button over here. And um, so that's what that's for. You can also uh, do voice commands so that you can push that button and say call a specific person. You can also say tune to a certain station. There's all kinds of different voice commands for this vehicle. It takes a little bit of a, a learning curve to figure it out, but it's well worth the, the effort. Then you go to your settings and stuff. So down here you got your presets for your radio and um, you also like say when you put in a you put in a CD or something you can change to the tracks you can also tune through the stations that kind of stuff here you got a volume on this side tune through the stations on this side on the radio and you can randomize your songs if you have a specific uh, playlist or whatever you can randomize it you can repeat a song or you can repeat a play playlist that kind of stuff and uh, so down here is your climate controls it's just a little slim bar here you got your uh, your dual basically is base your pet driver and passenger side and um, your fan speed your front and rear defrosters and mode basically changes where you want the air to blow so I'm gonna push mode so you can see um, see the little man sitting there and he changes it so it's showing me different places where the air can blow that's what mode does. This is for recirculating the air inside the vehicle. Four-way flashing buttons there. Now, 
Okay, so we've got this pocket here with the two power supplies on either side. And I'm just going to kind of see if my phone can fit in there. Not really. It fits in there, but the shifter gets in the way. It is big enough, but I guess if you're if you got it in drive, um, it fits in there. It's kind of not really super stable. So I guess smaller phones would fit in there. Uh, this is a, a Note 4, so it's a little bit, a little bit on the big side. And so right below that, I'm gonna put it down and drive here. Um, right below that, you've got your heated steering wheel controls and um, your heated seats traction control you can turn that off default is on when you turn the vehicle on your tow mode if you're hauling a heavy trailer make sure you push that because you can mess up your transmission um, so just push that and it'll adjust your transmission shifts and gears to uh, be able to accommodate the heavy load of a trailer so that's very important now here's the shifter I've got it I just went in and put it in in park and go ahead and put it in reverse to show you the backup camera now you heard the beeping is because somebody walked by but uh see it's got the backup camera and so you're backing up or you know getting ready to back up and something's back there it'll beep at you and let you know there's something there to avoid you hitting it and the same thing if you're going you're creeping forward um, or reverse in the front so if there's something if you're turning the steering wheel um, you can kind of avoid hitting things there in the front as well and you can you can downshift all the way you go to drive you go to third which is four uh, or fifth um, so right there is fourth gear this is this is I'm sorry fifth gear this normal drive is here fourth gear is here third second and first Normally you would never have to go into any of those. You just stay right there. If you're going downhill or something, you might need to uh, downshift. And that's the reason for the different gears there. That's one of the reasons. Alright, so you got a pocket there on the side of the console. Big pocket there. And... Um, not really sure what this is um, there's like a little door here maybe you can tell me what it is but there's a storage pocket here and this whole thing right here will lift up like so and this is where now like I told you before the headphones and the remote control are in this this box here sealed up and then you've got this big storage bin here which is you know you can put a bunch of junk in there but um, don't want to put too much junk to where it covers up your inputs here you've got the RCA jacks and a USB plug here to plug in stuff play it through the radio Up here is your rear view mirror. It is an auto dim system to where if somebody's behind you with bright lights, it will auto dim. Uh, you do, can you turn that feature off here, on this, right here. Your home link, which is your, um, these three buttons is for your garage door controls. Uh, so you can open up your garage door with this system once it's, uh, once it's kind of paired up with it. And you got some tap lights up here. Um, a place to put your sunglasses. And this is for your rear control so let's say you got a whole bunch of kids in the back and they can't reach the climate control or you don't really want to mess them messing with it you can lock it out and control it up here so you can control your rear um, climate control system right here with the fan speed the temperature uh, where you want the air to blow on them too and uh, this one does have the, the sunroof so I'm gonna go ahead and show you it has a manual open and close shade and then you can um, you can vent it like so, and then you can also open it. You can stop it any time and move it back forward. And then you can close it like that.
Okay, so let's go ahead and check out underneath the hood and see that 5.6 liter V8. Alright, the hood lifts up very easily once you unlatch it. It does have the, the pistons there, it lifts it up. 5.6 liter V8. It does have kind of a small hood for a V8 engine. It has a smooth, very smooth running engine too. It has a massive amount of uh, power too. Let's check it out. Let's see what we got here. 317 horsepower and 385 pound-feet of torque and that's where you really need uh, that's where the power comes from the torque so that's pretty pretty good that's a uh, dual overhead camp V8 If you have any questions or clarifications, if you have anything to add, if you have any experience with this vehicle, please leave your comments in the comment section. And um, if there's anything I missed or you know got wrong, please correct me. Uh, this this will definitely, I hope, will help people that are looking for a vehicle like this and uh, make them help them make a better decision. So anyway, I'm here at Grand Strand Nissan in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'm going to leave uh, my friend Victor's phone number in the description. Uh, if you're ever, if you ever come to Myrtle Beach and you're, you know, might possibly look at upgrading your vehicle, uh, give him a call. Uh, give him a call in advance. Go ahead and line everything up. I, he'll be glad to help you. He's a really, really nice guy. He's not a not a pushy guy. Not a, you know, anything like that. So uh, very knowledgeable. He's been in the business for a long time. So um, so. If, Anyways, I'm going to leave his phone number and email address in the description. Um, if you have any questions as far as purchasing a Nissan, just let him know. Anywhere in the country. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure he can work with you pretty much anywhere. So, anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.